Hello everyone, welcome back to Amruf channel for another Awakening Kiosk era video. So in today's video, I'll be creating a guide on the new legendary hero that's currently available in the limited summon banner and that hero is Batmar. So currently he's a legendary hero from the Titan Iceland. So in this video, I'll be walking through his abilities to understand how he works and then I will then demonstrate him in certain dungeons in this game to see how he performs. And let's dive in right into it. So this is his character animation where he wields his sword and slams down to the ground with his icy blade sword. Let's take a 360 degree look. So he looks like he's mainly like white and grayish bluish team. He wears a large cloak made of fox tails. And then he has a two icy shoulder pads made of like uh, the elephant tusks. And then he wears... Does he wear a helm? No, he doesn't wear a helm. I think this is his horns. Spiky horns. And then he wears some, you know, leather armor to protect him or to keep him warm with some metal gauntlets here. So that's basically his character animation as well as his character design. So yeah. And let's check out his overall stats. He has like uh, S rating for health, A rating for attack and critical rate, and B rating for defense and speed. So... It could be his uh, health uh, damage dealer since he has an S rating for health. And let's check out his abilities to understand how his uh, abilities work. So let's quickly go over his abilities starting off with his trait known as the Light of Redemption. When an enemy deals damage with area abilities, heals all team members for 25% of Batman's max health. And then once you ascend him, he will also gain shield equal to 30% of max health for 2 turns. So basically this one, this feature is something similar to the epic hero Jonathan. Jonathan is able to generate a large shield equal to 30% of his max health. Whereas for this Batmar, it's 30%. And you'll need to have around about 5 copies of him to get uh, the 5th ascension in order to unlock the shield feature. Then you'll make him super tanky. And yeah, if you if you use Jonathan, then you know how useful his shield is in multiple areas in the game, like Queen of Tides, Ash Magistral, the Void Tower Mythic difficulty, and so forth. Alright, and then moving on to his basic ability known as the Touch of Destruction. Deals 120% damage to one enemy and removes one positive effect on them. When the enemy has no positive effect, reduces the ultimate ability cooldown by one turn. So this one is really useful for against enemies that applies positive effects on themselves like the Reef of Chaos, the Fire Boss and then we also have the Light Tower Dashmir, Queen of Tides and also the Gemini Dragon that applies the Fury on himself so those are the four areas that Batman can be really good at and then his uh, special ability known as the Piercing Assault this one has a 4 turn skill cooldown Applies defense down version 2, which reduces the enemy's defense by 50% that cannot be resisted to one enemy for 2 turns and deals 120% damage to them. Damage skills with this hero's max health, so you do not want to build lots of attack but mainly to focus on the health, the health percentage uh, stats on the equipment. So, yeah, and also it gives you an idea not to build him with focus stats because his uh, ability to apply this negative effect or this debuff cannot be resisted which, which means that you do not need to build focus stats on him however if you want to benefit from this touch of destruction to remove the positive effect then you need to build some focus stats on him so it depends on where you want to use him let's say if you want to use him for areas that you need to remove positive effect then you need to uh, build focus stats on him I wish that the developer will also apply, you know, apply the same thing, this uh, not resisted for this basic ability. Then you can be him really with high health and defense stats to make him super tanky. And then last but not least, his uh, ultimate ability, known as the final judgment. It has a 4 turn skill cooldown. Gives 150% damage to one enemy, steals two positive effects from them. And applies no positive effects that cannot be resisted to them for two turns. Damage skills with this hero's max health. So this implies that you do not really need to build focus stats on him. 
uh, just uh, prioritize on the health because this one can be applied regardless of the enemy's uh, resistance stats. Alright, so that's basically it. So let's uh, do a quick tour on his gears. So currently I'm gearing him in a revival set as well as raider set. Revival set is mainly useful for multiple areas in game when you want to make him sustain throughout the battle for a long battle like the Rift of Chaos. Uh, Queen of Tides, Ash Magistrate, and so forth. If you want to use him in a quick battle like Arena, then you might want to gear him in like a Dragon skill set. So let's quickly go through the gears. So the stats that I prioritize on him will be will be the health, defense, speed, and focus, and some resistance. If you if you plan to use him in in a Void Tower meeting. So this is the weapon. I'll just quickly go through the gears. You can pause the video at any point of time. To take a look in more detail. So this is the helmet, uh, armor, boots, uh, ring and health ring as well as a uh, health necklace. All right. And for the relics, basically I did not get any good uh second secondary stats that that synergizes with his skills. I just get the attack percentage. And for the relics, sorry, you cannot get any like health or defense. You mainly get attack or critical damage for the relics. Uh, the asteroid crest and uh, for the you know for this one let me see what's this this is tome so for tomes right i did not farm tome because i did not have the specific heroes to farm uh, those uh, water grief of chaos and then for the astro grill i just get the health percentage the secondary substat doesn't really matter here because it's really difficult to get the right one his glyphs and abilities are all mixed up. Let's quickly go through the ascension. So these are the ascension. The first ascension get, gets him 15% health. This one is really good. And there's attack, not that useful. Defense is useful. And speed is also useful because Rift of Chaos is really fast. You want to get him with more speed. And then get the fifth ascension. And here's the guide, which is a new feature that the Ace developers have added. So you can see all the ratings here. If you take a look, so it states that arena defense is good, offense is not that good because it does not really do damage, it only provides support. And he, since he's a water hero, right, he's not really great in uh, dungeons that is wood affinity like Bane Rave or the, you know, uh, Roaring Topa. For Ash Magistra, it's a solid 4 or 5, depending on what ascension you have him if, if you got him to the fifth, fifth ascension then he'll be a five but without the ascension he may be just around about four or uh, the for queen of tides is uh, should be a five because he can strip away buff heal Fish of the wind mm, i'm not sure about this maybe a four germany dragon could be a four as well four or five depending on uh, what heroes you can synergize with him Alright, so this is a guest statistic formation. This is my friend heroes. You can see if you have uh if you have many friends, then you can check out which of your friends have this bad mark. So you can take a look on what gears you want to gear with them. Alright, so that's basically the overview of bad mark. So let's do a quick check on how he performs. Let's go out to the adventure to understand how his skills work. Let's do one battle. Okay, so we are going in here. So in this demo, right, I'll just briefly go through his skills in slow motion so you can get an idea on how he works. Alright, so let's try his, you know, his special ability. Apply defense down. So he frees the enemy, then hit the guy, but doesn't really freeze. Huh? Okay, so that healing comes from his uh, revival set. And then, since they did not put anything, let me do a... What's this? I'm waiting for them to apply their, their buff. Let's see what they can do. Okay. Okay. Let's try to hit the green guy. Okay, so... When I perform a basic ability, right, if he, if he does not have any positive effect, then you will apply that no positive effect on the enemy here. Okay, so now we can steal their, their buff. So let's use the basic ability again on one, one of the enemy here. Okay, we have, we have removed the positive effect. 
Okay, let's knock this guy down. I'm waiting for the AOE attacks from the enemy, okay. Let's apply... Let's apply defense down this guy. Knock him out. Okay, so when, whenever that girl performed that AOE attack right here, do you notice that he heals? It's because of this passive ability, Light of Redemption. So whenever he gets hit by an AOE attack, he heals himself by 25%, which is really useful. Alright, so let's finish off this enemy. So most of his skills, right, is dealing single target damage. Alright, just now you saw that this, this wood guy, he performed his ultimate ability. Affects all enemies, and that also triggers his uh, trait. Alright, so let's leave out this battle. So now we understand that most of his skills, right, they are all single target, and he can strip away the positive effects from them. And yeah, and also apply no positive effect. Alright, so let's let me showcase him in the dungeon, the Queen of Tides. I'll be showcasing Batman in the Helm Stage 4. It will depend on how good your gear. If your gears are not that great, you can you know start off with like stage 10, move to stage 12. If you're like early to make a player who are lucky to get Batman, then you can certainly use him to support you from stage 10 up to stage 12 and then continue to use him through the helm stages. Since my gears are quite good for this kind of types, I'll start off at stage 4. I'll skip the formation to show you the team. So in this team, right, I have two epic heroes as well as one elite hero. So I'll have Batman here to showcase his skills. So let me quickly go over the roles and responsibilities of each hero, starting off with my leader hero here, uh, Hitoshi. So basically, uh, he's there to clear off the first as well as the second mobs. Because those crabs are really dangerous at the helm of stage 3 and 4. You want to quickly wipe them out before they can get a turn. And this is the overall build. In case if you want to have a reference point in order to replicate this team formation on your account in order to farm these helmet stages. So as you can see here, these are the total stats for Hitoshi. 6000 attack, 177 speed. You just need above 160 speed. And for, for Hitoshi, you just need him above 70% uh, critical rate. And these are the stats. I'm currently gearing him in a Raider and as well as Avarice. Next on the list will be Antunua. Antunua is, is one of the best single target damage dealer uh, in the epic uh, lineup for the wood, uh, wood affinity. So I'm currently gearing her in an SSC set that allows her to deal 50% more damage to the main target and has a 50% chance to deal 35% more damage. He, she has around about 7000 attack, 163 speed, 100% critical rate and 311% critical damage. Then I have uh, Joseph. Joseph is an elite hero who is really useful in most part of the game up until late game. So I'm currently using him here for his, you know, improvisation, which uh, uh, provides the attack up to boost up my hero's attack stats, as well as providing some sustainability with the defense up. And he, the most important part would be to cleanse away the stun, uh, stun and negative effect from the Queen of Tides boss. Uh, let me quickly show you his gears. Basically, I'm just gearing him in all Raider set because this is my arena build. Super Raider set and these are the things. Okay. And uh, for Batmar, I think I've already shown you him. Show you his gears. Let me show you his overall stats. So he has around about 26,000 health, 5,000 self to defense, 213 speed. You, you mainly want him to go first to strip away any positive effects from the boss as well as to apply the defense down. Then ideally you want to have more focused stats on him. And for the spells, I'll be using Sandra Purgatory as well as Gaius Renewal for supplementary healing. But this one is not uh, necessarily needed because that man's healing, at, even though at the f uh, no, no ascension, he is also quite useful. Alright, so at the start of the battle, Joseph will go first because he's pretty fast. He'll boost up everyone with the attack up, followed by Batman to apply that uh, no positive effects. And then Hitoshi finish off the enemies here. Then Batman is quite useful on the second wave to apply the defense down to make it easier for 
to shoot the cleanup. And for the boss uh, battle sequence, ideally you want to take away the right tag guard because the right tag guard can heal the boss. This one will speed up the run. Right, so now Batman applies the no positive effect to prevent the left tight guard to apply the counter attack buff on the right tight guard. So just how you try to apply it, but it prevented. So this is really useful in this aspect. Apply defense down, which makes it easier for your damage dealer to, to wipe out the right tight guard. Now the secondary target will be the boss here. Since there's no healer to heal her, this will make, will make the run even faster. So as you notice, right, each time the, the, the boss performs her AoE attacks, Batman can heal up all the allies, the, the healing skills based on Batman's uh, max health. So the more the more heal, uh, more health that Batman has, the more healing he can uh, deal. So the boss performs AoE attack, it uh, triggers Batman's passive to heal up everyone. So now Batman tries to... Yeah, Oh, it deflected. I think he did not manage to steal away those positive effects. So, so let's try again. So he performed his final adjustment. He has stolen all of the buff from the boss and then also cast the no positive effects on, on her. So this makes Batman really useful in Queen of Tides in case if you do not have uh, like other heroes to support you like Blackhorn or... Morial or so forth. Okay, so let's check out the battle report. So this battle lasts for like nine rounds, and these are the damage dealt by my damage dealers Hitoshi at 577,000, followed by Antinua at 379,000. These are the damage taken, which is pretty distributed, and this is the healing dealt by Batmar. Alright, so let's move on to the next dungeon. For the next dungeon, I'll be showcasing Batmar in the Ash Magistra. I will showcase him in Helm Stage 2. Okay. Alright, so for Helm Stage 2, I'll be using uh, triple epic heroes. Uh, the heroes are Hecri, Natalia, and Timons to support uh, Batmar here for the attacks. The reason why I have Hecri here is to synergize with Batmar to improve the max health of all my heroes so that this increases Batmar's healing from his passive skill. Let's do a quick uh, overview of each of these heroes so that you can have a reference point to replicate this on your account in case if you want to farm Ash Magistra, Helm Stage 1 and 2. But this team can be also used for Helm Stage 3 and 4 but it's pretty long because there's only a single target. Only a single hero that's dealing damage here. The main damage. Alright, so let me do a quick start with the main damage dealer who is Natalia. So Natalia is currently geared in double raider set as well as one guard set. Guard set is basically is to trigger her passive skill to you know apply the immune buff on herself. So she has around about 6,000 fire rate attack, 100% critical rate, 314% uh, critical damage, and focus on re resistance. You do not need that because she's basically a damage dealer. And then we have Hecri. The queen is there to provide an additional buff for Natalia. She needs to have at least four positive effects on her, uh, which is this one. The queen is applying this max health up to Natalia so that she can have four, uh, four positive effects. And most importantly, the queen can provide this aura to allow my heroes, the squishy heroes, to sustain themselves against enemy attacks. So this is the queen's stats. She has around about uh, 24,000 health. Close to 6,000 defense. This, this stats right is mainly made for the Fire Reef of Chaos. Which is, which is pretty difficult. That's why you need this, this stats to hit that. But I think if you have around about 4,000 defense, it would be uh, 3,000 defense for uh, Helmer Stage 1 and 2 would be okay. 4,000 to close to 5,000 would be for, be for the Helmer Stage 3 and 4. You do not need uh, this high amount of speed. This one is mainly for the Reef of Chaos. We're currently gearing him in a double vanguard set and one guard set. The guard set is mainly used, uh, mainly used for the arena as well. So I, I can use Hecarim for arena, Rift of Chaos, and also Ash Magistra. Then for Timons, basically this is my uh, main build for the you know guild versus environment. So currently I'm gearing him in warrior set as well as rebel set. Ideally for Ash Magistra, 
you want to gear him in an every set so that he can deal 50% more damage. Warrior set is to provide him with 50% attack, so currently he has around about 5,500 attack, close to 100% critical rate, 319% critical damage, and 156 speed. Alright, so that's basically the stats for Helmer Stage 2. For the spells, it will be the same. Alright, so let's showcase this team in Helmer Stage 2. Alright, so at the start of battle, Batman goes first, do some attacks followed by Timons, who will always perform an AoE attack whenever the allies perform an attack. But uh, Timons will only be able to trigger his passive ability, that AoE attack, whenever there are 4 or more enemies and when your heroes are dealing attacks on the elite hero. Alright, so we are now on the boss. The boss will cast or will summon 5 fire imps, but at the high stages it will be 7 fire imps. Currently, these fire imps will not revive themselves back whenever they get fatal hit. This one only happens for Helm Stage 3 and 4, which I will later I will demonstrate. Alright, so. As you saw, when the boss performed an AoE attack, that must heal up everyone, which is really useful here. Okay, that's the attack. The boss has already lost like 2 bars of health now. Demons is really useful here to apply the attack down to reduce the damage taken by your heroes here. Although the boss does not apply, uh, apply any positive effect on himself, uh, Batman can still apply that defense down on the uh, on the enemy so that your heroes can do more damage. So for for Batman's role here, he's basically sustaining your hero with heal, and once you get him to the fifth ascension, he can generate a shield which is useful to boost up Natalia's damage. So that AOE attack should generate a, a shield. Once Batman gets the fifth ascension. Alright, so now our heroes already have three max health up, which means that the healing dealt by Batman will be significantly higher. Okay, let's see again. So the healing dealt is 9681. Previously, it was like uh, 5000 or 5000 plus in the Queen of Tides. So the max health up really synergizes really well with uh, Batman. Let's check out the battle report. So most of the damage done is the uh, team here because he's he's performing that auto attack whenever his allies perform the attack. These are the damage taken and the healing down. Alright, so let's move on to a second team. So the second team will will introduce another legendary hero. Because for Helm Stage 4, you really need powerful damage dealers. Alright, so I'll be replacing T Moons with a legendary hero who is. See, who is Pluto. And Pluto has an aura that can provide 30% attack aura to boost up everyone. And then I will not use Hat Green, I'll use the Elite Hero. The reason being I use Joseph is because I want to provide uh, Pluto with an attack up buff so that he has sufficient damage to wipe off the fire imps. And since I've already showcased Joseph's stats, I'll just show Pluto instead. Alright, so currently Pluto is currently geared in an every set. Let's check out the total stats here. He has around about 5000, close to 5100 attack, 100 set speed, 100% critical rate, 261% critical damage. And yep, that's it. This is every set, 50% more bonus damage when attacking an over an area. But this one can only trigger once per round. Alright, so let's see this team action. Okay, at the start of the battle, Joseph will boost up everyone, followed by Batman, and then Pluto to perform the AoE attack. And finally, Atalia will perform the finishing kill. Oops, <laughs> just uh, her, her damage is not there yet. Now Batman will apply the defense down on this elite hero. The reason why Atali can go is because of the speed up buff provided by Joseph. Alright. So that's the uh, attack up and defense up. So there you have it, Pluto performed 
the kill on the 5 imps, which resulted in the fatal hit. That's how the 5 imps revived themselves back with uh, think 50% health, and then Natalia performed the finishing kill. The reason why Pluto is really good here is because he can apply the damage down, which reduces the boss damage against your hero. And then he also is capable of applying that unhealable buff, which you can see here. So whenever the boss performs that spinning attack, he wouldn't be able to heal himself up. Okay, so the battle has around about 4 positive effect, so it can perform a fatal hit on the fire imps. If you, if you manage to get Natalia to uh, perform only one attack for each uh, wave, right? For the first two waves, then she will consistently get that immune buff whenever the boss performs that uh, bomb, whenever he throws the bomb. The, re the reason why the boss always targets Natalia with the bomb, right, is because uh, Natalia has the highest attack stats here. Alright, so there you have it. This is the showcase of this uh, Ash Magistrate team for Helm Stage 4. And let's check out the battle report. Proto, as usual, deals the highest damage here. It's not even booked compared to Natalia who is already booked. And this Batman and Joseph, these are the damage taken as well as the healing dealt. Alright, hopefully you get an idea on how to build your Ash Magistrate team with uh, Batman here. Alright, so I think the next place we can use that one will be the Gemini Dragon. Let's try him here. So currently, I managed to uh, make uh, the, the team works for Helmet Stage 1 and 2. Let's try him at Helmet Stage 2 here. So for this team... Yeah, for this team, I need to make he, make these two heroes more tanky. This team is this speed <laughs> is mainly for the what's that called? For the Rift of Chaos. Uh, Rift of Chaos. Oh no, I think this one is for the uh for the Speed New King team. Speed New King with uh, Aaron. So let me change the gears first. So this is the speed and focus. I need to change his gears. Let me search for the one. So this makes him more tankier. Okay. And then I'll choose this girl. Okay, and now I need to so I'm missing one gear on that now. Let me just change another gear here. Revival set. Alright, moving on to the next Arcane Dominator dungeon, which is the Gemini Dragon. So I'll be showcasing this team in uh, Helm of Stage 2 because my Poisoner Damage Dealers who are Ganjilo as well as Santis does not have much focus stats on them because I've already diversified my, my hero gears to other heroes in the game. So I'll just showcase for Helm of Stage 2. But this, uh, this, you can replicate this, uh, this strategy for Helm Stage 3 and 4, depending on your gears. Alright, so for this team, I have, uh, I have Ganjelo, as well as Santis, as my primary damage dealers. And then I have Hakrin here to provide the, his aura, the defense aura, which is really useful to mitigate those in, uh, incoming damage from the enemies here. And let's quickly go through Ganjelo's stats. He has around about close to 31,000 health, 2,350 defense, 199 speed. For Helmet Stage 3 and 4, you want this speed to be higher to go before the boss. And then ideally, you want to have 150 to 200% focus stats because the boss will have a passive skill that increases his re uh, resistance for every negative effects on him. And currently, I'm gearing him in a revival set as well as a raider set. Revival set allows him to heal himself every turn, and Raider set is to provide addi uh, additional speed. And then for Santis, let me head over there. So Santis is currently geared in a Curse as well as Raptor set. I do not have sufficient Revival set because they are used on other heroes. 
Kukurisa allows her to have a 35% chance to launch a bonus attack to apply more, more negative effect, which is poison, on the enemy with her basic ability. So she has around about 26,000 health, 1,800 defense, 195 speed, 118% focus. Alright, for health stage 3 and 4, you need to have more speed, I think above 200, and focus around about 150 to 200%. And for the spells, I'm using Sundry Purgatory as well as Shield Mercy. Shield Mercy is, is a must to protect your hero in case you're not able to land sufficient poison, so you need your heroes to survive. Alright, so at the start of the battle, I've set the sequence to attack the right tag guard first, and uh, sorry, the right minion, who is able to apply the immunity buff that prevents your heroes from applying that poison, and then only attack at the boss. And it also buys some time to apply the Shield of Mercy. On the, I think on the 6th round. Uh, so for the abilities, I've already disabled both Gangelo as well as Sentis to prevent them from dealing damage to the boss. Because once the boss health drops below 50%, right, you only have 2 turns to, 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 to defeat the boss. Otherwise, you will one-shot all of your heroes regardless of the health, defense, or agility. Because he, his true damage will just bypass all of your defenses. So once this uh this minion is down, you will then attack the boss. So now the boss just taken two turns that already removed that immunity buff that is supplied by the minion. So now we are landing all of those poison on the on the boss now. And the, and the defense style is really useful from Batman because sometimes you want to deal more damage to the boss so that to be able to like uh, reduce or knock out his health low enough. Okay, so on round 6, right, we have the Shield of Mercy ready, and then we apply those poison. So the boss will fly, this is the first attack, and then we got a second attack. Assuming that if you're not able to, uh, to land sufficient poison, right, then the Shield of Mercy will protect that Kanjilo, because that, that next attack that the boss will do, or not strip away the positive effect. You just try to nuke up your heroes. And this is the battle result. 7 rounds. And these are the damage dealt. Gangelo at 116. Followed by... Eh, and this has the highest damage here. At 221,000. Followed by Gangelo at 116. And these are the damage dealt by Batman as well as Hakrin. These are the damage taken. As well as the healing dealt. The reason why Hakrin takes the least damage. Because he has the highest defense stats among all of these heroes here. And the, these are the healing dealt. Basically, Batman is performing those AOE healing, which is really useful, especially when you do not have your heroes in a revival set. As you notice, right, Sentis was able to uh, sustain herself with the healing uh, provided by Batman, because the boss keep on applying the AOE attacks. Alright, so let's move on to the Rift of Chaos. Alright, so we are now on the No Man's Land dungeon dash mill, where this boss is famous for his positive effects. The more positive effects he has, the more damage he can deal, and once he has 4 or more positive effects, he can one-shot your team. If you take a look at dash mill skills, you can see that he's able to have this body of light that grants him render stats up bonus for 3 turns at the start of each round. And if he has 4 or more positive effects, uh, sorry, uh, more than 4 positive effects at the start of the turn, he will deal true damage to all targets based on max health while ignoring all enemy positive effects. So this one will one-shot your, your heroes. So you cannot have him to have more than 5 positive effects. That's where Batman comes in to strip away those positive effects and also apply no positive effect to prevent the boss from uh, receiving future buff. However, the boss will be able to remove all negative effects at the start of each round. Oh yeah, so let's see how we can tackle Dashmu here. So this is the team that I'll be using to showcase Batman. I have a Florence to provide the increased damage taken for my primary damage dealer to deal additional attacks and deal more damage. And then I have Sarah to deal some, uh, to, to finish up the first wave quickly. And let me quickly, let's just show you the stats of each of these heroes, starting off with Florence. 
which is currently get in a fit set with 27,000 health, 1,000 air defense, 240 speed, and 69% focus. You need some focus stats on her to remove positive effects. And then we also have uh, Sarah. Sarah is basically for my cleanup to speed up the cleaning process. So she's currently in an average set as well as a radar set. She has close to 6,000 attack, 156 speed, 100% critical rate, and 338% critical damage. And for the MVP here, the main damage dealer would be my epic hero. And the epic hero is Augustine. So Augustine is there to deal massive amount of damage to light heroes. So currently he's geared in an SNC set as well as guard set. So he has around about close to 5,000 uh, several attack, 120 speed, 100% critical rate, and 358% critical damage. You can have some focus stats on him because he's, he's also able to strip away positive effects. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Oh yeah, for the spells, I'll be using Smoldering Flames as well as Sundering Purgatory. Alright, so we are now in the Dashmere, the Light Tower. So I'll be showcasing Batman here because he's really good in stripping away those positive effects from the boss. The reason why this boss is famous for his positive effects similar to like Queen of Tides. He's able to grant himself random stats up bonus for 3 turns. And he's also capable of removing all negative effects on himself. But the best part of all is his Sacred Heart ability. Which allows him to deal fatal attack on your, on your heroes once he has 5 or more positive effects. Because this one deals true damage which ignores all of the enemy positive effects as well as their defenses. So this makes him really dangerous once he, he, he has 5 positive effects. That's where Batman comes in to apply that no positive effect as well as stripping away those positive effects and also you know, stealing his, his positive effects. Alright, so let me showcase the team. So basically, I'm pairing Batman with 3 epic heroes which you can easily get. First one will be Natalia. Hair Queen will be the one that you can synthesize. And then Augustine. Augustine is a dark hero which deals 50% more damage to uh, light heroes. But this also means that he will receive 50% more damage from the light boss himself. That's why I have Hecarine here to mitigate those incoming damage with his defense aura of his uh, trait. And then Batman is here to provide uh, those uh, AoE healing because the boss will likes to do AoE damage. And for the spells, I'll be using Smoring Flame as well as Sundering Purgatory. You can choose either one. If you're, if you're not able to sustain, you can get Guys Renewal if you're early to make him player, if you're lucky to summon Batmar. Alright, so let's see this team in action. Alright, so at the start of battle, Batmar goes first because he's the faster than the team. And followed by Hackwin to provide additional positive effect to Natalia, which is required for her to, to nuke out all of the enemies. She needs at least four, 4 positive effects. And that's where Batman comes in to steal those two positive effects and also applying that no positive effect so the boss will not gain positive effects. And that's the counter attack from Augustine. Oh, I guess the no positive effect doesn't really work on the boss because he can you know, remove those negative effects from, from, from himself first before uh, applying the, those positive effects. So I think it doesn't really matter. But the most important thing is to strip away at least two positive effects from the boss to prevent him from uh, getting that five positive effects. Alright, so we are now at the Reef of Chaos. So I'll demonstrate that mine in the Lava Colossus at stage 8. The reason why he's so good in this Reef of Chaos is because his ability to remove that critical rate up buff that's placed by the boss. If you look at the Wydola's uh, boss descriptions, right? you notice that he has this ability at the start of the battle. Sacrifices 50% of his current health to gain Ember. Ember allows him to be immune to Poison, Plague, and Max Health-based damage, which is the true damage. Critical damage is increased by 200%. When attacking, gains 2 stacks of critical rate up, kept at 4 stacks. And you do not want this critical rate to stack up too high because that will allow him to do even more damage to your heroes here. So what makes Batman great here is he can steal those critical rate up buff from him as well as applying no positive effect to prevent him from gaining future critical rate up. And he's also able to, uh, to remove that critical rate up. So let's say if you do not have any heroes that can strip away positive effects such as like 
uh, like who are uh, like Grayson, the first hero that was introduced for the Rift of Chaos, the water, water one. This one, this is Grayson. Grayson has the ability to strip away positive effects based on his rippling circle trait. When an enemy receives positive effect, he can remove one positive effect. But at the highest stages, right, the boss will keep on uh, gaining more and more positive effects. So the ideal way to defeat this boss right, is to apply no positive effect consistently or you will need to remove his positive effects. And then I also have another hero here who is this girl. Looks like a ninja girl. So Haruna is also able to strip away positive effects. Based from her fearless mind trait, active attacks remove one positive effects on the target. So let's say, assuming that you do not have Haruna as well as Grayson, right, you can use Batmar here to help you to clear this lava closest, and then you can replace both Grayson as well as Batmar, uh, uh, Grayson as well as Haruna with other uh, water damage dealers like Bucky as well as the one of the pirate guy. Let me find the hero's name. So previously, if you check out my videos, right, you will notice that I also use this guy. This guy is Hori. I did not book him. So if you book him, right, he'll be able to do massive amount of damage because he has the ability to perform uh, his Serpent Trust trait that scales based on the enemy's uh, lost health. So the more health the, uh, the enemy lost, the more damage he can do. This one deals really a lot of damage. And same goes to Bucky. Another epic hero which is really useful for the Bayou de Las, which is this guy. Currently, I'm building him for Arena. So, if you want to build him for this Rift of Chaos, right? Ideally, you want to get him, get both Hori as well as Bucky speed above 200, 205 or 208 around there for, uh, for stage 8 of this uh, Bayou de Las. Uh, this is my basically my build for Arena. But if you want to use Bucky as well as Hori, you need to gear him them in an assassin set for them to do even more damage but for now right i'll be using these heroes because i do not want to change too much gears around all right so this is basically my heroes and let me quickly go over their their stats so that you can replicate this on your account you do not necessarily need to have uh atara the spider girl haruna as well as uh what's this called grayson you can replace them with a uh, hack green and two water damage dealers like uh, Bucky as well as Hori. And for this uh, fox guy, you also do not need to have him there. You can have like Blackhorn in place of Poros. Alright, so let me quickly go over the, uh, the roles and responsibilities starting off with Poros at the leader uh, spot. The reason why I put him in the leader spot is he's able to provide critical damage by 25%. To all my heroes for them to do even more damage and currently i'm gearing horus in an assassin set so this is a set that i was uh, talking about just gear this type of set on bucky as well as hori so they will be able to do even more damage and get them above 200 uh, 200 plus speed so Poros has 4000 attack 116 critical rate 238 percent critical damage and some focus to apply that negative effect like attack down and increase damage taken and then for say for Rose, then we have Atara. You can replace Atara with Hakri if you don't have her. Uh, Atara is here is uh, her her main uh, her main role is to, re to to cleanse away the bomb. So if you do not have Atara, you can replace Atara with a Black Horn. Black Horn can uh, perform healing as well as uh, cleansing cl to to cleanse away the bomb. So Atara plays two roles to provide. She has a unique aura to provide additional defense to her allies as well as to perform cleansing. So she has around about 16,000 health, 4,000 defense, 221 speed. And she's speeding close to go first because I want her to cleanse away the bombs as well as those ignites to prevent my heroes from getting those ignite damage. And then some focus starts to apply the attack down. And she's currently geared in a Vanguard set. So that she's able to amplify her defense stats. So this is the trait that I was talking about. She has an aura that provides 20%, something similar to Hackrain. And next on the list, I have Grayson. Grayson is just basically my damage dealer. He can he can strip away the positive effect, but since you have Batman, you do not need him for this. But you can use him to consistently provide this attack up buff 
for your damage dealers to do even more damage and also the most importantly is apply this defense down so your heroes will be able to do even more damage and currently i'm gearing him in an assassin set then next on the list i have uh, haruna so haruna is also in an assassin set uh, plus a warrior set here so she has around about 5300 attack so it's speed close to uh 100 critical rate maybe i should use some augmentation to boost up her critical rate okay and that's basically about it she does not need focus stats to because she doesn't apply any negative effect or stripping away i don't think her stripping away positive effect requires focus stats all right so that's basically my heroes and for the spells i'll be using guys renewal for supplementary healing and suddenly ring purgatory for the defense down so let's see this team in action Okay, at the start of battle, Atarit goes first to apply the defense down and attack down, followed by Poros to apply that increased damage taken. And then Grayson to apply the UE attack up, then followed by uh, Batmar to apply the no positive effect to prevent the boss from getting the critical rate up, and then Haruna to deal some damage. Then Batmar can also apply the defense down again. And since Batman has the highest health here, right, the boss will be targeting him. So if you want to use Batman for the Rift of Chaos, right, ideally you want him to have a lot of health and defense stats so he can tank those single target attacks. And as you notice, right, each time the boss performs UE attack, he's currently healing up everyone's health close to, to uh, I think, max health, which is really useful in this scenario. But, but Batman isn't able to perform cleansing. That's why I have Atara here. If you have a black horn, right? Black horn can replace both Batman as well as Atara for the healing as well as cleansing. But you will need to have another hero to provide that defense up buff or aura, a defense aura, so that it will reduce the damage taken by the heroes here. Uh, my, my main primary damage dealer will be Haruna because she's currently booked with some mastery books for her to do some damage. Ideally, uh, Haruna, uh, Haruna is not really great, but I'm just using her just for the Rift of Chaos. Because I do not want to always like, switch Bucky's gear or Arena as well as for the Rift of Chaos. Because I do not have much gear slots left. Alright, so now the boss is in 15%. As you notice, right, uh, Batman has already stolen this critical rate up buff from the boss. So now this one has like two stacks of critical rate. Which means that Batman has 50%, additional 50% critical rate to, to deal a critical rate damage on the boss. Okay, my heroes are full health gain. So, as you notice, he has stolen the critical rate buff. Now Petma has 75% critical rate. So he can deal even more and more damage. So you do not really need to build him with high critical rate for him to do critical damage. As you notice, he's now capable of dealing critical damage there. Alright, so let's check out the battle report. So as usual, Haruna is my main damage dealer. She's dealing around about 884,000 damage, followed closely by Grayson and then Poros. Both will be Atara, and last but not least is Batmar. These are the damage taken. Most of the damage taken is from Batmar because he's taking most of the single target attacks. And these are the healing dealt. So the more, uh, I was quite surprised to see Poros has the highest healing compared to Batmar, because the reason why Poros has the highest healing there is because all of these heroes, right, whenever they perform an attack, they will perform like some kind of like a life steal to heal up themselves. It's not really a lifesteal. Like each time they perform an attack, they will, they will be able to heal themselves. So these are the, the, the healing dealt by Poros. So as you notice, right, we, we really need uh, some additional healing. Especially to get through the, the Ignite's damage, as well as those single target attacks. If you are able to get Atara to the 5th Ascension, right, she will be able to consistently every round to remove that Ignite damage, so that your, your squishy heroes not get killed too quickly by the ignite damage here all right so that's basically the run for the rift of chaos hopefully you can build 
or replicate this uh, team but using the heroes that you have on your account all right so that's the end of my video demonstrating batman's abilities hopefully you guys have an understanding on how his skills works and is it worth it to summon batman through this limited summon it's pretty costly if you because the stardust costs are thing about two to three times more than the regular uh, summon using this uh, advanced summoning crystal so i don't see him really worth to summon unless you do not have specific heroes on your account such as like uh for especially for the reef of chaos the lava colossus if you do not have haruna if you do not have like Grayson to strip away the positive effect then that might is really useful in this scenario and apart from that if you're early to mid game player and if you're having trouble you know uh farming the what's that called the arcade dominator queen of tides if you do not have a stripper hero to strip away the positive effects and also providing healing then that might is really useful here as i demonstrated on how you can speed farm this queen of tides and then for Ash Magistra, he's somewhat useful, but his usefulness will skyrocket once you get him to the 5th ascension to, to, to allow him to generate the shield like Jonathan. And then for Jonathan Dragon, he's there to you know remove the positive effect from the boss. He can provide AoE healing. And yeah, because the boss likes to perform AoE attacks, right? He can keep on healing your, your heroes. Downside is he cannot really help you to speed farm Jonathan Dragon like compared to other heroes like... Uh, Aaron or the uh, Lightwing Ev uh, Evelyn First Dawn he's, he's not that fast but he can help you to you know uh, farm some Gemini Dragon gears and yeah so that's basically it if you found this video helpful do give this video a thumbs up and if you're new to my YouTube channel you can click on the subscribe button so that any videos that I upload on this channel you'll get notified as well and yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.